Hello everybody, I'm Paul Cobbing from the National Foot Forum. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, right. Oh, two introduction slides. Um, what we're going to do today is come to a little bit of an introduction about the National Foot Forum for those who don't, don't know about it. We're going to focus on what we've done through the Frames project. I just want to give you a little bit of context for some of that. And I want to finish off with some really important stuff that is coming up uh, over the next few weeks and months um, that would be helpful for you to know about and then yeah, on. Okay, it's all about people, not stuff. There are hundreds of people, thousands of people who are underwater at the moment. And tonight is going to be another very bad night. There are people who are really scared, really traumatized, who are out of their homes, whose homes are damp, or wet, and they won't be able to get back into their homes for 6, 12, 18 months. This is why we're interested in flooding. Okay? It's about people. Because it doesn't really matter about the stuff in people's homes, it really doesn't matter about anything else. It actually matters about the fact that 36% of people who get flooded suffer PTSD. For every person flooded, there are another eight who suffer PTSD, depression, anxiety, and so on. This is about people. This is why there is such an interest in flooding. This is why the television cameras are all on the ribs at the moment. Okay, and I spent the morning doing TV and radio stuff. I spent yesterday doing the same thing. This is why this is important. And I am guilty as anybody of going on to the technical stuff. Okay, I do it because it's easy. This is what's important. And it's life changing. You know, I still get phone calls from people who flooded in 2007, and they cry down the phone to me. And it's not funny. It changes lives. And this is why we've got to get a grip of blood risk management, and why the work that you're all doing is important, but we also need to get a grip of all the other things that are important. The National Flood Forum is a charity that was set up by people who were flooded in Beauty. And they realized there wasn't a national organization, so they set up the National Flood Forum in 2002. It supports communities that are at flood risk and is dedicated to uh, have that focus. So it hasn't got, if you like, a government policy angle, it hasn't got a, um, any particular insurance angle or whatever. It is about the needs and focuses of those people. And it's about taking the water almost isn't the problem. It's the fear. It's the hope. It's the impact on people's mental health. So it's about helping people to take control. National charity, it's actually well in excess of 300 affiliated groups now. We've got a range of projects across the country. This is Bugling, which is also underwater. And something like 30 homes went under the other day, possibly quite a few last night, uh, including some of our staff, actually. There we and we support people to prepare for flooding, to recover from flooding, yeah, and that will probably take, we'll be going in now, but looking for 12 to 18 months of support is what people need. So once the blue flashing lights go, is when people's trouble start. Okay, it's about insurance, it's about accommodation, it's about living with work, it's trying to build a project, taking people through the insurance claims process, all the backness of that will involve, all the contractors and so on and so forth. Why are we different? We are independent, like some a lot of NGOs. We do have an attitude that is focused on those people who work. And we help people and communities take control of their flood risk. We support people to actively engage with their partners. So rather than providing and taking people to solutions, we give them the skills and the knowledge to be able to engage effectively. And that's effectively where we're different, for example, from the Environment Agency or any of the others who will actually help people but actually not necessarily give them the skills. So, for example, just a simple example, we will never chair a meeting of Blood Action Group because we want the community to feel that they are in control, and we will support them to do that, but not do it. So we tend to work in the spaces that other people can't fill. Lots of flood groups around the country, it's rather an old map. Okay, let's talk about brains. 
we normally think of about 28 different types of intervention, of which natural flood risk management is one. Okay? So it is about public health, it is about insurance, it is about building regulations, it is about planning and development, it is about how you manage highways, it is about the drainage through an urban space, it is about the culvert and the water supply and the drainage system and so on and so on and so on and so on. And all of those issues form part of the work that we do at policy level as well as with individual groups. And so we spend a lot of time working with groups and developing something we launched last Christmas or last November the last day of Parliament was a charter for developed by flood action groups over a period of two years. We launched it in Parliament with Rachel Meisel MP um, and that is, if you like, a statement of how people at risk of flooding feel and what they feel needs to be done. It starts off, I won't go into it all, but it starts off, communities living at risk of flooding have a right to lives not dominated by the fear of flooding. And to achieve this, our nation's ambition to tackle flood risk in the face of climate change needs to increase dramatically. Decisions that affect communities must be made with the community's involvement and we must act now. There is a role for anyone, everyone. And then it goes into a long list of what needs to happen. Those 28 different things. Moving swiftly on. Uh, Multi-layered safety. This is the framework that <coughs> I'm sure you must have heard about this earlier today. So I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to move swiftly on. So a lot of the work that we've done in Kent, for example, has been with well, that's setting up flood action groups. And these groups have done lots and lots of things. The adder is the wrong photo because that's in West Sussex, but they've done lots and lots of things. Once the group is set up, they will go and do whatever they want to do. Okay, we don't predetermine that. And that's one of the problems <coughs> of actually bidding for funds and things like that, because we're not saying we're going to build a wall or we're going to build some, um, plant so many trees or build whatever. It's whatever that community feels is the issues that they feel need to be addressed. And at the beginning of the process, you, of course, don't know what that is. You have to put in the, the facilitation, and you have to put in the hard work to build social capital, build those community groups up, and they have to ask their communities what are the issues that they feel are most important to them. And they have to build agreement, consensus, and then you have to work collectively with partners. We've got a project in Great Yarmouth, I was in the steering group yesterday, which is quite innovative. We've taken, at one level, it's just about fitting leaky water butts and raised beds to houses. At another level, it's about saying, what's the supply chain for actually making that happen? How can we, what are the, what's the procurement process? <coughs> what are the natural arrangements? What are the measures to make sure it actually works properly? At another level, this is actually about saying, how do we change the language that we use? Now, to something along the line, so we've tested different languages, different approaches. How do we persuade somebody who's not actually at flood risk themselves, but who's people further down the street are at flood risk to participate? And so we've been trying out different languages where everybody has a role, what's yours? And that's been quite interesting to experiment with. So we now have a done and done system. We've tested it. We've tested the products. We've uh, tested the installation processes. We've tested the contracts, the procurement exercise, etc., etc. And we've got lots of lessons to learn from that. So again, in itself, that's nothing. That's only just a little exercise. But actually, it's a Trojan horse into a whole new way of doing things. And we're already talking to various people about how we might do that elsewhere and go on to the next step. Because, frankly, if we all think we're really going to tackle this stuff, we actually do have to think of water in the hole, in the round in the first place. We need to think about water supply and drainage and sewage in one breath. And we need to say, well, what is the role of everybody at work and in the home? Because every sector in society has got a role. Well, what is it? How do we make that work? So this is just a little lead in, but very interesting. 
we've done some, we've created some evaluation tools. Shani's been involved with this. This. Um, we've created some evaluation tools, four evaluation tools for blood action groups. Because one of the problems we have is how do we how do we get funding for this? There are no funding routes um, for people and in in flooding. We've got plenty for technical stuff, you know, building walls and dams, plenty for environmental stuff. Plenty for the, the sort of natural flood risk management stuff, but nothing for people. Nothing to support flood groups. Okay? At all. So we need to persuade people and we need evidence and we need to be able to prove that we've done things. So, uh, and how do we get an evidence base? Well, this is one way that we get an evidence base. Um, and I think the tools are really useful and might need adapting for different purposes. Still a bit complicated, but Frames has allowed us to develop. We've also taken some work done by Joseph Rowntree Foundation and on disadvantaged communities and applied that and tested it. So that one of the problems we have, and everybody has, is that the people who shout loudest often get the funding. Okay, you say, well, that's fine. But actually, they're the people who have the skills. They're the people who are often at the least risk. They're the people who... Um, are able to have the contacts, the networks, and things like that. The people who are really disadvantaged, the people who don't have insurance, the people who don't have the skills, the people who don't have the finance, they're very often the people who are most silent. So how do we get to them? How do we make sure that they're prioritized? So we've done a piece of work through frames, um, using the Joseph Franchi work, to develop a methodology that actually allows us not to just say who, is but what is that? What are their issues? So somebody in this slide, for example, they could put vulnerability in there. Might well say, well, these are the areas we should be looking at. Well, now let's find out what the issues are. So in this particular example, we looked at one one error in the, the dark the dark red next to the sea. We couldn't understand what the problem was. But actually, big houses protected by a huge wall, but asset rich, cash poor, couldn't afford the insurance. Okay. So it's highlighting there's a risk problem. So instead of it being a flood risk management issue that we have to address, we have to address an insurance issue. And, how, and then that poses the question, well, how do you do that? And that's when we're tackling that, that particular issue. That's part of friends. So the issue is about partnerships and how do we work in partnerships for the future? Well, one way, is we're bringing people together at our conference in York on the 5th of May, March even. We've got the minister coming along, we've got the local MP, we've got the Committee on Climate Change and so on and so on. We're participating, we're bringing groups together with the professionals to discuss how we implement the Charter. And in particular, we've got the budget coming up on March the 11th, where we think for things. We've got a new national flood and coastal erosion risk management strategy due to be launched sometime very soon, along with a policy statement, and we're pushing really hard and collectively, a lot of my work is uh, intergovernment alone, to try and let that level of ambition and scope up so that we start a chart, have a chance of beginning to tackle the flooding that people are suffering from this week. Thank you very much.